We don't live back then, but even then, this is unique clothing. It's not a rope, it's not the normal outfit. It's, yeah, let's get some coarse camel hair, and I'm just going to strap that on. That'll be good. Just, just put on some <laughs> camel hair. And come you know, new breathable type fabric. And he wore a leather belt around his waist, and for food, he ate locusts and wild honey, which, again, doesn't send you into the ordinary level of profit. Uh, doesn't send you down into the, you know, user-friendly kind of guy. This guy's a little bit of a freak out of the wilderness preaching. Okay? People from Jerusalem and all over Judea and all of Jordan Valley went up to see and hear him, John, and they confessed their sins, or baptized in the Jordan River. This is John. With this, he develops a group of disciples who start to stay around him, listening to him, learning from him. Thank you. We have the sickness going through our family. I'm on antibiotics. I'm not contagious, but it is one for my church. Not mine. So here's John. All right. With this context, you've got his disciples who are starting to hang out with him. Go back to school. Okay. So now let's go back to the book of John. A few pages back over. You bookmarked it in your iPhone. And I hate you. Um, and with that context, here's this guy surrounded by people who come out, listening to this strange guy eating strange food, wearing strange clothing, with a strange message, who stands up and the next day sees Jesus coming towards him. In the middle of his sermon, in the middle of his preaching, Jesus is walking towards him, and he stops everyone and says, Look! It's making people a lot more uncomfortable. They point to them. Look! The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, for you and I, that's an interesting and unique metaphor. For the people of Israel, this was powerful because the whole system was set up that when you sinned, you know, you got up in the morning, you stubbed your toe, and you took the Lord's name in vain. You took a lamb. You went down to the temple. You slit its throat. And you sacrificed it on the altar for the forgiveness of your sins. This was the lamb to take away the sin. So as he said, look, this is the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world, they're immediately going to that thing that they've seen happen over and over and over again where this Lamb is sacrificed. This is high drama. He's the one, verse 30, I was talking about when I said a man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. Now, understand this in context. Remember, John is at the height of his popularity. There are throngs of people, crowds of people coming out of Judea and Jerusalem coming to here. This is like going to a Jonas Brother concert right now and having them get up and go, yeah, we really suck. Um, we're not really the real deal. You need to listen to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, there's, you notice know, there's a lot of people like, Jonas Brothers, Brian. Brian said, they're going, yes, they're not. <laughs> For his disciples, this is a huge statement because they've been staying with this guy as a messenger of God. For the people listening, this is a huge statement because he's not it. They've been saying, is this guy the Messiah? And he's like, I'm not it. In fact, that's the guy right there. 